We now learn how to find the formula for the cross product, also known as vector product, of two vectors. To calculate the cross product of two vectors, we basically have two options. The first is to learn the formula that we see at the bottom of the screen here off by heart, which works perfectly well. The second way is to use matrix algebra, in particular the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, which leads to the same result. In other words, so long as we learn how to calculate the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, we needn't bother to memorize this formula off by heart. And to prove that, let's go ahead and derive that formula using the two vectors we have here, as well as matrix algebra. So let's get started. The cross product of u and v is equal to the determinant, which we write between two vertical lines like this, of the 3x3 three three matrix, so that's a matrix with three rows, as well as three columns, whose top row is made of the three unit base vectors. So those are i, j, and k. The second row of the matrix is made of the components of the first vector in the product. So in this case, that's the vector u, whose components are u1, u2, and u3. So I'll just write that, that's u1, u2, and u3. Finally, the third row of the matrix is made of the components of the second vector in the product, so that's v, and its components are v1, v2, v3. So I'll just write that as well, that's v1, v2, and v3. All we have to do now is expand this determinant. And don't worry if you haven't seen matrices before, in this tutorial I'm assuming that you've never worked with a matrix. So here's the idea. We can tell that we're dealing with the determinant of this 3x3 three three matrix because it's written in between two vertical lines, or bars. And the whole idea here is to expand this determinant by working across the top row that we have here. Here's how that works. Starting with the unit vector i, we can go ahead and state that this equals to i times the determinant of the matrix that we'd be left with if we got rid of all of the entries in the same row as i, so those are j and k, as well as all of the entries in the same column as i, so that's u1, v1. And we can see that we'd be left with this 2x2 two two matrix, two rows and two columns, whose first column is u2, v2, and second column is u3, v3. So I go ahead and write that here, that's u2, v2, and u3, v3. And that's the first term, or component, taken care of. We now move on to the second term, and for that we move on to the second unit vector in the top row, so that's j, but in this case we subtract that unit vector j, and j multiplies the determinant of the matrix we'd be left with if we got rid of all of the entries in the same row as j, so those are k and i, as well as all of the entries in the same column as j. So those are u2 and v2. And so we'd be left with a 2x2 two two matrix whose first column is u1, v1, and whose second column is u3, v3. So if I just write that here, that's the determinant of u1, v1, u3, v3. And that's our second term or component taken care of. And we move on to the third and final term in the top row, so that's the unit vector k, and in this case, we add k, and that multiplies the determinant of the matrix we'd be left with if we got rid of all of the entries in the same row as k, so that's i and j, as well as all of the entries in the same column as k, so that's u3 and v3. And we quickly see that's the 2x2 two two matrix, whose first column is u1, v1, and second column is u2, v2. So I write that, that's u1, v1, u2, v2. There we go. Now at this stage, we've expanded this determinant along its top row, and we can see that we now have three terms, which are the three components of the vector that we're after, and for each one, we need to calculate the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix. Luckily for us, there's a nice formula for that. The determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix A, B, C, D is equal to A times D minus C times B. So that's a times d minus c times b. Keeping this formula in mind, we can now take care of each of these 2x2 two two determinants and state that this equals to i times in parentheses 
u2 times v3 minus v2 times u3. So that's u2 times v3 minus v2 times u3 minus the unit vector j times, in parentheses, u1 times v3 minus v1 times u3. So that's u1 times v3 minus v1 times u3 plus the unit vector k times, in parentheses, u1 times v2 minus v1 times u2. That's u1 times v2 minus v1 times u2. And that's the formula for the cross product of two vectors. And we'll usually see this written with each of the base vectors i, j, and k on the right hand side of these parentheses. So the formula looks something like this. The cross product of the vectors u and v is equal to, in parentheses, u2v3 minus v2u3 times i minus, in parentheses, u1 times v3 minus v1 times u3 times the unit vector j plus, in parentheses, u1 times v2 minus v1 times u2 times the unit base vector k. And I'll go ahead and box that formula. Now, in class or in your textbook, you may have seen this formula written slightly differently. Indeed, the operation between the first and the second term is often written as an addition. And for that, all we need to do is to swap the two terms we have inside this second pair of parentheses. And in doing so, all we're doing is rewriting this formula in a different way. It means exactly the same thing, though. And it would look like this. There we go. And now the formula boxed in green is equal to the formula boxed in red and is exactly the same as the one we showed at the beginning of this tutorial. And so knowing how to derive this formula allows us to avoid having to memorize it off by heart. Indeed, let's say we were given the two vectors a with components 2, negative 1, 3, and the vector b with components 5, 0, 4, then rather than plugging these components inside this formula, we could simply state that the cross product of a and b is equal to the determinant of the following matrix. i, j, k, those are the unit base vectors on the top row, and on the second row we'd write the components of the first vector in this product, so that's the vector a. So those are 2, negative 1, and 3. So we write 2, negative 1, and 3. And finally, on the third row, we'd write the components of the second vector in the product, so that's vector b, and its components are 5, 0, 4. So we'd write that 5, 0, 4. And using exactly the same technique as the one we used to derive the formula, we would expand this 3 by 3 determinant to obtain the vector product. And in fact, we work through this example in our next tutorial, so do make sure to watch it. For now, though, that's it for this tutorial.